Hi friends, it's Sunny and I'm back. So for those of you who have never seen my channel before, my name is Sunny and I am a professional ballroom dancer. Um, and I host for free, uh, I'm not monetized at all, um, weekly dance tutorials um, for my students and the public's welcome to view those. Um, and I've also recently been um, sharing reviews of Bravo TV's Dancing Queens Ballroom Dance Reality TV show. And in posting those videos, um, I'm getting some interesting comments and questions. So um, I'm going to answer those as best I can, um, following up um, on people's questions about what goes on behind the scenes in the real competitive ballroom dance world. So first up, I have had a number of people ask about what do dancers eat? Um, and I just want to ask you if you have an eating disorder and you're viewing this to try to get some sort of template for your sickness, please exit now. Do not watch that. It's totally not the purpose of this video. It is singularly informative to share with people what I've seen most dancers eat, certainly competitive dancers. I am going to focus on what competitive dancers eat and particularly what the elite level competitors eat because most people in the dance world are just social dancers and they eat whatever the heck they want. Um, and even most pro-am dancers pretty much eat whatever they want. Certainly they monitor a little bit, but it's not as strict of a um, physique expectation from the judges if you're doing pro-am or the low levels of amateur. You can go out there and look however you want and you have the opportunity um, to place well if you dance well. Um, next up, uh, Queen Park commented um, on one of my Dancing Queens reviews. Gosh, it's kind of weird that these ladies are eating so crazy. I mean, we're talking about sitting down with giant, you know, rib dinners and fries and booze and reality check. This is totally faked for the show. Um, there's no way ladies at that level are just eating like pigs however they want. Not happening. They are definitely monitoring their diet. I fully believe this was staged for the show to make for compelling viewing. Although absolutely we do go out to meals together as friends when we're competitors at competitions. Um, we also might treat ourselves to a treat, say, um, I don't know, some sort of sunch, uh, hot fudge sundae or something after a comp is over, after our final round, because we probably... Um, been very carefully wa we're watching what we eat up leading up to that comp, so we kind of want to treat ourselves. Um, okay, so first up, there is a substantial misperception, um, not only in the public, but in the medical field, that we are slim just because we are dancers. Um, and I can tell you from personal experience, um, when I was competing, I was medically with a healthy BMI on the lower side. But um, ever since I retired, I've been medically underweight. And not once has a doctor asked me about this or expressed concern for my health. There's just this assumption in society that we are skinny because we dance. And this is not true. The exercise alone is not, not how that's done. Um, we all... Um, monitor our food and beverage intake in some way, okay? Um, so again, this does not come into play if you're doing Pro-Am, um, but what does come into play is you do dance quite a bit when you get more serious, um, whether a serious Pro-Am dancer, serious uh, amateur dancer at the higher levels, any professional. Um, there is a factor of staying slim just because you are dancing a ton. And it's not the exercise itself, in my opinion. It's that you're dancing. There's no way you can sit and chow down on Twinkies when you're having a dance practice or a dance lesson, right? So just time-wise, that actually makes it quite a bit easier. And sometimes you finish practicing or a lesson, and you're so pooped, you just, you're too tired, and you just go to bed. So um, in that respect, I would say just the exercise alone does play a function. 
Um, but realistically, diet does play a significant part. Um, and again, physique matters at the higher levels. Um, coaches will even sometimes advise their students to lose weight, again, at the higher levels. If you start out dancing, social dance prime, your coach is not going to ride your tail. Um, I myself had a partner who really struggled with his weight, and he was quite a bit overweight when I met him. Um, and he lost quite a bit of weight when he started competing. But my theory, I'm more of a set point theorist. And I, um, I feel like if you're born a certain way and you have a genetic preposition to um, look, have a certain body type, there's only so much you can do you know, short term, you can you can attack it, but long term, I think your body's just kind of want to go back to to where um, it's meant to be. So, um, if you're going into dancing and you are very heavy set, don't go in with an expectation that you're going to lose 200 pounds just by dancing and you're going to be a supermodel the rest of your life. I think this is not realistic. Will you lose weight? Probably. Um, and will you need to really focus on your diet if you get to the higher levels? Yes, this is realistic. Um, you know, again, my overweight partner, when we very, very, very first started competing in bronze newcomer, you know, we saw visiting coach Richard Booth, who's respected in our interest, um, in our industry, um, RAP, RAP Richard, he was a good guy. Anyway, um, he said to my partner, uh, you lead, need to lose about 20 pounds. Um, and he's like, you don't only need to look fit. You need to look hungry. And that's going to show your lines best on the floor. And that's going to athletically help you get things like better flight and speed. Um, and unfortunately, that that probably is true. He's speaking the truth. I personally don't advise my students on their weight. Um, I don't feel it's, it's you know, my business. I think if they're those that are already at the higher level of competition, they aren't dumb. They already know that. They don't need me riding their tail. Um so, um, dancers do, again, at the higher level, often have diet hacks, okay? So, um, things we do um, that maybe the public wouldn't do to help us stay slim, okay? Um, and firstly, there is no uh, set diet for dancers. We all do different things. Um, we're not built in a Ford factory. Our bodies are all different. What works for me may not work for another person, um, as you know. Um, but the reality is almost all of us, I'm, I'm venturing to say 100% of us, though I can't speak for everyone, honestly, I'm just me, but we do exercise some sort of self-restraint and restriction, okay? Um, so as an amateur, um, I dancer, what I saw in the amateur community, albeit championship level, but it was primarily calorie, calorie restriction. Not so much their food choices, but the volume. Um, so again, you might treat yourself when you go out after a comp, but you're not going to have um, bad, unhealthy, fatty, high sugar food every single meal. Um, we do, again, go out together, but I can tell you as an amateur, I went out with um, some friends um, who were also championship level dancers and one of them, a dear friend, and he was very well intended when he said this, uh, he saw me, I picked up a uh, bacon, egg and cheese uh, muffin from McDonald's. He's like, Sonny, you cannot eat like that. Um, and so um, he meant well, and, and it's true, you really can't eat like that. But you know what? I was treating myself. It was one time I certainly wasn't at McDonald's every day, I promise you. Um, oh, I should also add, when I was competing, I, I was at lower, you know, end of healthy BMI. So I'm underweight now, but that has not been the case. You do not have to be medically underweight by any means when you're competing. As a matter of fact, you really wouldn't want to be because you need that muscle, ma um, muscle mass just for strength and endurance. Um, anyway, um, I did see a lot of amateurs um, stay slim just because when you are a championship level dancer, you have a limited budget as an amateur, you can't afford healthy food. I had a friend 
Um, and we're talking about like a, a world championship, world championship level um, dancer live on ketchup packets for three days in Blackpool because um, they got those for free and didn't have to buy the food. And and as a hardcore competitor, certainly as an amateur, you are spending every um, dime you have and investing that in your dancing, whether it's the travel, the costuming, the coaching. Um, so I have definitely seen that. Um, now the pros, and especially the pros, you know, who no longer compete in the um, Open Professional Championship actually usually do make a solid living, respectable living financially, so they can afford to eat actually healthy and stay slim. I, um, that's not always what the amateurs, you know, have available to them. Um, the coaches usually... Um, tell you to lose weight. I don't usually hear them give specific diet advice, though I have heard some give very specific diet advice and inevitably it is the diet plan that works for them. Um, and they're, in my opinion, the ones I've heard are not healthy. For example, just eat small pasta meals or um, you can only eat corn and potatoes until you lose that weight. Like this to me seems a little cray cray, but I, if I hadn't heard it with my own ears from very elite level coaches, I wouldn't share it with you. So this kind of thing does happen. Um, and as I said, there's a wide variation. So now I'm going to share with you kind of what the um, open professional championship levels eat usually and different types of um, diet plans that have worked for different people that are super common that I've seen. Number one, alternate fasting. So they will either skip breakfast or they will skip breakfast and lunch. They might have nothing at all. They might have coffee during the day. They might have small snacks, but they really only eat dinner, sometimes lunch and dinner. Um, number two, keto is definitely on trend right now. So many do keto. Um, and that's like a um, some carbohydrates, um, you know, per, lean proteins. Um, and I personally think that's really pretty healthy. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not advising you. I'm just seeing what's worked for people. Um, next, I often see totally sugar-free, um, which is what I do. I, I never, ever eat sugar. I haven't had sugar in at least five years. Maybe it, maybe an exception for my birthday. Um I often see gluten-free. I often see organic. Um, I often see artificial artificial sweetener-free diets. Um, so I'm not advising, I'm just sharing what I've seen that's super common, okay? Um, I very, very rarely, both as an amateur or a pro, saw diet pills. Um, and I did share with you in a previous video that um, you know, you at the championship level, you can be drug tested and diet pills is one of those things that can actually um, DQ you not only from that comp, but then you're kind of banned from competing for a certain period of time. Um, so that's, I'm sure it happens. I just personally never saw it. So I can't speak for everyone. Um, I do see um, supplements like protein shakes. I like to do whey protein powder and have like a shake at night with that. Um, and I just personally, again, I'm not recommending it. It's just a snack I like is that whey protein powder and ice. Like I whip it into a milkshake and then I add um, like a sugar-free syrup to it to make it taste good. That's me. You certainly don't have to do that. I just like that as a fun treat. Um, sometimes I'll see like protein bars um, or, or little small like bar snacks that are healthy in some way. Um, the only diet I have rarely seen and that I've, I have seen, but I've never, ever, ever seen it long term be effective is Adkins, where you pretty much just eat meat or protein or whatever. Um, again, I'm not speaking for everyone. Everyone has a different life experience. I'm just telling you, I know a heck of a lot of dancers and I've seen that very, very, very rarely. And it's good for immediate short-term weight loss, maybe for one comp, but I've never seen someone maintain weight long-term living like that. Um, and often they they crash and they end up coming back even more fat than they were before they started the Atkins. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but again, I'm not a, a doctor, so ask your doctor. Um, so um, 
I'm way over that 10 minute mark, guys. I apologize. I try to keep this as short as possible, but thanks so much for joining me today. And I will be back soon. I'm answering some more questions. If you'd like more specifics or there's something else about the dance industry you'd like to know about, kind of what goes on the inside, comment below and I promise I'll answer. And make sure to like and subscribe if you like today's um, video because that makes me happy. And comments, I like those too. Okay, guys, have an awesome day. Thanks for joining me. Hope that was interesting. Bye.